hello, hello. Oh, look at that, I'm upside down. Hello, hello, pop on when you, when you're, when you jump in and say hi so I know who's here. It's been a while so I'm super excited to color with you guys tonight. Somebody's here. I hope it's not me not being able to see comments. So we'll see uh, when you pop on, say hi, so I know you're here. Let me check on your phone, honey, and see if you can see any comments I can't see. So tonight, I want to color something from our new release. So I pulled out two stamp sets. What was that? Sure. Dog? Is he all right? Well, I had someone here, and now I don't. <laughs> okay, well, I just might be picking my own color in tonight. I'll start setting up. You guys let me know. If you're here, I might be coloring alone tonight. That's all right, too. I don't mind. Because I know some of you catch the replay. So, I'm going to go ahead and set up. My Misty. Get my ink ready. I am live, right? Mm-hmm. Hmm. Okay. All right, let's put this one aside for now. Maybe if somebody jumps on, maybe I'll color something they want. But I think I'm going to color the cat. I think that's you. <laughs> the one. <laughs> yes. I am the one. So, I'm going to go ahead and put the cat on here. And, who knows, maybe I'll do the unk, too. Hi, Dawn. Look, look, somebody joined me. I was going to let you guys pick what you wanted to see colored. Hi, Adriana. But nobody was here, so I wanted, I started, I got started, but I haven't stamped yet, so if you guys want me to change my mind, you can just let me know. But I have this stamp set pulled out called Life is Good. Hi, Angela. And I have this stamp set pulled out. I was going to color the cat and maybe the onk if we have time. But I can switch it if anybody speaks quickly and lets me know that they'd like to see something else colored. How are you, Angela? I was going to let you guys pick, but it took a while for people to jump on, so I stamped those two, but if you have any other choices, speak now. You love the new release? I'm so glad. This was my, this was the stamp set that I did. I love this one, but we colored it the other day. Okay, yes, the cat. Okay. All right. Well, then I picked good. All right. And I don't know if we'll actually have time to do anything with it tonight. We may have to craft a card with it tomorrow. Hi, Rosemary. But we'll definitely use the dies to cut it out so I don't have to fussy cut it. But So I have these two stamped. We'll start with the cat and see how time goes. This is my espresso. This is actually the demo one. I'll use the pink one. No, let's use the purple one. I'll use the purple one. <laughs> Can you tell I have a lot of these on my desk? I just love these espressos. I can't help myself. I have sweet sentiment paper in there. It's the best. I love it. 
If you haven't tried it, you should. It's super great. And then I have a Memento ink pad, which I'm going to use to stamp the cat and the onk. I'm still tired. It takes a while to recover from traveling like that, but I have to get over it pretty quick because I leave again next Wednesday, so that's kind of a bummer to leave so quick after just getting back. So I'm going to stamp the cat one more time because the part around all his jewels didn't uh, stamp quite as well as I wanted it to because this is a new stamp set. So I'm just going to rub it one more time. Perfect, perfect, perfect. So, hi Amy. So yeah, they stamped really good. So I'm super happy about that. I'm going to take this out. We'll clean this up and put it away after so you don't have to watch me do that. Um, we did this one in a previous video. So now we're going to have this whole stamp set colored, which is super exciting. All right, so I put those aside. I'm going to zoom in ooh, ooh, so you guys can really see what I'm doing. And then I have my color blend stands right here for us to um, put our color blends in when we decide what we're going to do what color we're going to do, actually. And, yes, I am using sweet sentiment paper always because I just love it so much. You want that glass mat? That's the Tim Holtz glass mat. Oh, I can only imagine, Angela. It's just such a beat down. I don't mind. I usually do pretty good when I take off to go, but when I get back, I need two days to really bounce back. I mean, really, really. I'm going to go ahead and pull out the color I like to do with uh, for the gold um, because I know I'm definitely going to put some gold on it. And then... Um, <laughs> okay, good job, Rosemary. You will love it. It's amazing. It's the best paper ever. I super love it. I think we're going to go with the... I was thinking we'd go with the C's. You have stuff for him to do. Yeah, I know what that's like. I am going to use, I think I'm just going to use three or four of the, the black colors. So C9 and 8, I mean 10 and 8. I'm, I'm going to put 7 in here, but I'm not really sure how much of that I'm going to use. And then 6 and 5. So I'm going to go, I'm going to skip 9. And then I'm going to go in order. But I might skip seven as well. I haven't decided for sure. Okay. So we have those colors picked. I have gold. I think I'm going to actually put the yellow gold in some of this. But we'll put some other colors in there as well. I'm thinking. You do love the Copic stand? That's awesome. Me too. I do. I even use it when I'm not doing a live. Because I love it so much. I am going to need a multi-liner tonight. So I'm going to pull out the point three, And I'm just going to set it aside. I think we need a few bright colors up in all of this. So we're going to have gold. And maybe a teal color. And I really, I want it to be really bright teal. So I think I'm going to go with the, um... Yeah, I think I'm going to put purple, too. I don't know why I like it, why I like to throw the purple in there so much. But I think the blue, we're going to do 18. Hi, Melanie. 16, and then BG 13. So we're going to kind of mix that, that blue color. So those are the three blues. And then we definitely need a purple. 
so I'm gonna go with I'm gonna go with the 09 and then 17 and 15 so that's gonna be my purple colors because these are gonna be really small amounts of it. It's just gonna be in, in the necklace area. So teal and purple to go with our gold color. Now, I have chosen the gold color, but I might switch it around a little bit. Sometimes I just have to see how it comes together. 28, 26, YR23, and then Y32. That's the one I'm unsure about. Maybe we should just swatch it out. You know how I like doing that. So we'll just do that and see how the gold looks with that. So I take the first one, which is Y28. And then Y26. And then YR23. I might switch the positions on those. And then Y32. Yeah, I think Y32 would be great. Hi, Sharon. So I'm going to switch them up to um, Y28 first, then YR23, and then Y26, and then Y32. Those are going to be my, my golden colors. So... And I think we'll, we'll mix the same colors on both of them so that we don't have to use too many different colors. Um, but I'm going to start with the gold. I've had a couple of people ask a couple of questions like, why do I take both caps off? I know we've said this many times, but prior to um, when I used, I keep my markers pretty full all the time. So... Um, sometimes they tend to blob if, because they're so full if I don't open both caps. Now, some people say that's a myth and some people don't. So it's a little bit, I don't know, but I can tell you the proven fact of that for me is that ever since I started pulling both caps off, I haven't had any blobs. So even if people say it's myth, it works for me. So I'm going to keep going with it being the reason. Um, I'm going to start by putting the inside of the ears and I'm just going to do the back side of each one of them with the darkest gold color. So I'm going to start with the ears first and I'm definitely going to do some of this and maybe I think maybe I'll just do the ones that go with the long lines as the gold. So I'm going to put under at the bottom and then I'm going to do a little bit from here so just because it has lines in it doesn't mean that it necessarily has to be colored individually or each one it's very small space I'm gonna zoom in just a little bit more so you can see it it's a very small space so you can kind of color it how you want but I'm not going to color each one individually because I just don't think that that's necessary for this very small space that we have. You can also do that when you have a whole bunch of flowers all bundled together. You can sometimes just dot around on it and it'll fill it in like exactly the way you want it. So I'm going to do the same thing down here, although I did get my stamping a little bit thick down there. So you won't really be able to see too much of the coloring down on the tail and we'll make the lines a brighter color so they stand out. Hi Donna, hi Christy. I love it, I love it. You guys, I was almost worried that I was gonna be coloring all alone tonight. So I'm super happy to see you guys jumping on. I've been crafting for two days trying to get a project done. So I've been heavily crafting. I'm actually scrapbooking a project. So I've been super busy doing that. I'm extending out from where I put the last color. Since this is the darkest color, I want to put a little bit at the top and a little bit at the bottom. 
Whenever I do gold, I always go over the colors so they'll blend together very, very well. So that's, that's the reason why. But I don't do that with all the colors. I just do it when I'm doing the gold because I feel like there's not a really good gold color, so you have to combine colors together in order to get what you want. So that's what I'm doing here. And I'm just touching in between these with this darkest color. Right now? Wow. Okay, so there we go. Now we have one more color. Hi, Medina. We have one more shade in this color combo. I know it's not a five color combo, but if you can blend, you can do however many color combos you want. However many markers in the color combo that you want. Now, I like the way this looks, but it's pretty dark, and I want to bring out a little bit more yellow, so I think I'm going to add in some Y11 on top just to uh, really bring out that color, that brightness of that gold. If this was a larger space, you'd be able to see that gold come to life a whole lot better, but it's such a small area that you won't really see it till I color the stuff in black. So I'm just gonna kind of go over this to sort of lighten that color a little bit. And then I'm gonna do the same down here. It's gonna kind of blend and lighten at the same time, which I like and is what I'm going for. So there we go. See, it's a little bit brighter. It kind of lightened it up just a little bit which I think we needed. So we ended up with a five color combo in the end anyway. Y26, I mean Y28, YR23, Y26, Y32, and Y11. So we ended up with five colors anyway, even though that wasn't the original plan. I am gonna go ahead and do the black next, but remember, I usually like to do black and red last so that I can get a really good um, color out of it and I don't pull any of the black into the color that I want to do but tonight because the full cat's going to be black I want to go ahead and do that. Hi Phyllis. So here we go. Let me scoot my chair over so I don't go off screen. Okay so we're going to start this mission here with C10. It's the darkest cool gray color that we have. So this is where our shadow is going to be. So I'm going to put just a little amounts in here to begin with. So just a little bit around his head. And then I'm going to do some here under the chin area and where the collar meets up. I'm not really going to do any on the face just yet. I don't think I really need any on the face unless I want to do the nose black black. So I might just put a little bit in here on the nose so it remains darker than the rest. And then in here, in between these little circles here and right below, I'm going to very, very carefully and with my marker straight up so I get tiny, tiny lines. I'm going to go in between these circles and fill in that space because these circles are kind of like coins hanging off of the collar. So we have to color them in. Okay. So now we have that part done. I'm gonna go just a little bit down the back, not too much, a little bit behind his arm, not slightly down his belly. Gonna come up from right here, a little bit down this leg. 
I'm going to come down here in this low, low area right here above his feet and below his feet. And his tail is sitting right on top of his legs. So I definitely want to get some black in there as well. Now I am going to do a little bit down here. Just because this leg is overlaying the rest of his body. But, and right here where his tail is covering. And then that's it for the darkest shade. I don't want too much on there. I think I do need a little bit right here though. I don't need too much of it because it is such a dark color and we have five colors to go. So I'm gonna start with that one. And then I'm gonna move on to C8. So I'm jumping the C9 color because it's very close to C8. So I'm going to extend out from where I put that original color. Extend from here. I am, you can tell there's a very good tip on the edge of this marker. And I'm holding the marker pretty much upright so that I have a very, very tiny line. Gonna extend out. Hi Karen. We're just coloring this amazing little cat here. I'm gonna be extending from where I put that last color. A little bit more down the back. And then we're going to go a little bit out from where his arm is overlapping his body. A little bit down here. Hello, hello, Michelle. We're coloring the cat tonight. Okay, so I'm going to go a little bit at the bottom of his feet with this second color. And then I'm going to extend out on his tail from where we put the last color. I'm also going to touch just below where this ring, where the ring is that we want to color a different color. I did go a little stray with that one, but I think we're okay. I'm also, since this is underneath his body, I'm going to do a come up a little bit into where he's sitting so we can get a little bit of color started there. So there we go. Yes, bones for Jack, bones for Jack. You can hear him walking around, can't you? Now you can choose yourself how you want to do all this design right here. But since I drew it, the way I drew it was I wanted a background color on here, not the cat color, and then stones in between. But on this one down here, since the, I didn't put a bottom line, that means that these are hanging from this one. So that'll at least give you an idea of what was going on in my head when I drew this guy. C7 is the middle, it's the middle number, so it's the one that gets the most, the most liberal use. So I'm going to start extending around his face. 
I'm going to go a little bit further here. I want the lighter color to be where those marks are on his face so you can see them because this is pretty dark color. I'll make sure I don't get too much dark in there so far. Hi, Kathy. The show was good. It was great. You got to see a few people that follow us that we hadn't seen in for a year, which was super nice. Everyone seemed to be excited we showed up again this year. Everyone was very nice. So it was a good show. My travel wasn't so great, but you guys read that on Facebook, so you already know how nightmarish that was. So now we're starting to fill in this hind leg right here. Yeah, the show was good. It was nice. The first day it was really hot. They didn't have air conditioning running in the facility and it was 90 outside. So it was really, really hot. But... In their defense, they said they use a swamp air conditioner, which is sort of foreign to me. But I guess what happens when you use that is water can drip. So um, they didn't want any water dripping on anyone's product or anything. So I understand why they didn't do it, but boy, it was hot. Really, really hot. It cooled off the next day, so it wasn't quite as bad the next day, but it was really hot that first, that first night. So we're starting to fill this in, kind of extending from the last place that we went. So now we have a funny looking cat here. Yes, I'm glad I'm home safe. And my next flight's a straight shot, so no switching planes, no running. Hi, Joy. So this one is C6. Hello, hello. So this one I'm going to use more too because I want you to be able to see the highlights that I'm putting in here. The last one will be the biggest one for highlights. And blending. You love this kitty. Hi, Mama. Oh, Mom, I miss you. So those of you who know... A week and a half and you get to see me. Yay! Um, those of you who know the Linda's watching, the Linda that just popped on, that's my mama. And she's been out of town for a very long time. I miss her. That's why she hasn't been able to help us at the shows because she's been traveling herself. So I'm blending that out. See, now you can see the eyebrows. I mean, the yeah, the eyebrow and all the details. And then I'm going to go up underneath the eye, but I'm going to leave the, this area for the um, lightest color. So you'll really be able to see that. Yeah, the shows are going well. We're ramping up for the next show, which we have to leave next week for the next show. It's the last one. And then the next thing we'll be preparing for is that retreat we have here in Texas, which will be great for me because that, then I don't have to fly anywhere, but poor Jamie has to fly to me. Um, so we have that coming up. And then it'll slow down for a little bit. So you see how um, these colors really blend smoothly and the lower the number, the lighter the color, hi Marisol, because it has more of the colorless blender in it, so it somewhat pushes the ink around. So you have to be careful when you're choosing the black colors to choose the ones well, you have to learn how they behave, and you'll choose the ones that you want to behave the way that you want them to behave. So it takes a little bit of practice, but once you play around with the colors, you'll really know. So my suggestion would be taking the blacks and just kind of playing 
with them, like blending them together to see which ones push and which ones don't. It's really helpful to know that and you can use it to your advantage, which we're going to do with the next color so we can get a really good um, blend of this plus a highlight. So we're going to use the colors to our advantage and move some of that color around. I think that's our little... So our last one in the color is the next step down. So that was C6 and now we're going to use C5. If I jump to C4 it will work, but it will push more of the color around and I don't really want it to push too much color. I want to keep this guy pretty black. So that this one will just blend it. See how it blended it out, but still left that highlight look to it. So you don't want to, you don't really want to blend over top of like any big spots like this because it'll mess up the dark color that you have there. So I am going to do this open space right here. And see how I cautiously do it, giving it time to dry a little bit so I can see if it's going to move the color around because I don't want it to move it around too much. And since I'm not leaving the pen on the paper very long, I can do another, if it doesn't blend as well as I wanted, I can do another coat of it. So it's looking good now. I'm liking the way it's blending out. Looks like I missed a spot right here. This is a super awesome. You sent Cooper's Halloween goodies today. He'll be so excited. I haven't actually seen him since I got home, but I have talked to them. They're getting ready for Halloween. Kind of blending this out. I might have gotten a little bit light on the neck right there. See how it's washing it out more than I wanted it to? So that's when I'll go back with the previous number, C6, and see if that'll fix it for me. So I'll just go over it once with C6, and that worked super great. So that's how you fix it if you push if you push the color too much. Okay, I'm gonna do the little tail next, and the little feet, little spots, and then we'll conquer the bigger ones. Just kind of lightly going across here because I kind of want to leave a little bit of highlight on that tail. And then we're going to do some highlight right here. And you can do the back and forth if you want. That sometimes will do a very pretty blend as well. We're probably going to have to go over this again with the C6. Want, you want to color him in purple? Oh, that sounds amazing. We could stamp him again and do him in purple tonight. He doesn't take that long to color, so. But some of him is a little bit lighter than I wanted. So I may go back in with the other color and just blend him out a little bit. But we can do that because we have control over the markers. So let's go back to C6. And watch how if I just do one very light, oh, thanks, Mama. It's okay. We're actually going to celebrate our anniversary this weekend, so you'll probably be right on time. There we go. See how that blended it but still left it a little bit of highlight on there? I don't want too much highlight because this cat really is supposed to be pretty dark. And then I'm just going to do one clean sweep over this area to make sure it stays a little bit darker than I wanted. Yeah, so when I flew out the other day when I was telling you guys about my terrible, awful, 
terrible flight. That was my anniversary, 26 years. My 26 year anniversary. And I was a mess at the airport. <laughs> I actually handled it really well. I didn't get really upset or frustrated or, you know, I kind of took it with a grain of salt. I ran, I was exhausted, but I still was feeling happy because I made the flight. Thank you, Michelle. And I was really happy and I was trying not to get down, but when I got there and my, our product bags did not come off the plane and they told me they met, they got missed in Dallas, I, it just, it was almost enough to set me over the edge. <laughs> Yes, I knew. I knew yours is this weekend. I already mailed you a card, too. But, um, yeah, so I got married on the 19th, and Mom and Dad got married on the 29th. And Dale's Mom and Dad got married on the 9th. So we have the 9th, the 19th, and the 29th. <laughs> Isn't that funny how that worked out? Okay, so I think what I'm going to do, those are the colors I picked. That's why I put them up for you guys to see. B18, 16, and then BG13, V09, V17, and V15. I'm going to start with the purple, and then we'll come in with the blue. That way, we can do the eye blue as well. Yes, so we have a lot of we have a lot of birthdays in June. Me, Dale, Mom, and we have a lot of anniversaries in October. So June and October are our years, our times, I guess. So I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to make these little parts in here purple in between because I want to make those little round circles. I want them to be blue. So I'm just using the tip tip of the marker and going in and coloring in between. So it stays purple and it stays pretty dark. So. The, these will be blue, these will be blue, this will be blue, and the top and bottom are going to be purple. I just decided that just now. So I'm going to put a little bit of color back there and just a teeny bit along the bottom. Did you see that for a moment? I forgot which ones I said I was going to make blue. <laughs> it's okay. We all do it. That's why these live videos are so good, because you get to actually see, yes, this is how we actually do it. And do we make mistakes? Yes. Do we do we do things different than we thought? Yes, sometimes. Most of the time you can't tell because you're not here to see us do it. And then once it's done, it looks great, so we don't have to worry about it. But if you want to know the truth, we make lots of mistakes. They're just not as visible to you as they are to us. Just like you think you make lots of mistakes and we can see them, we can't, but you can. So that's why you just never give up. You just keep on going. So this is the V15. This is the one that's going to really brighten up that purple. So I think this is the one that I'm actually going to use on the tail as well. So, because there's not enough to do a bunch of colors, so the top and the bottom are going to be purple, and then the other two will be the blue color. Is, that's what art is all about. You're right. That's exactly what it's all about. Do it your way. No problem. Okay, so I'm going to switch. Yes, I have two of these stands to B18. That's my blue color. So, I'm not going to do these in this color because I think it's just going to be too much. But I am going to use the tip of the marker and just do the sides of these teeny little circles. Now, the one in the back is going to just be all blue. Now, for those who don't have a lot of coloring experience, you can certainly just choose one color and color it in because you're not really going to notice all that much. 
I am going to put a teeny bit of this blue in the back side of his eye because I'm going to make his eye that blue-green color. So I need just a teeny bit of this dark to blend it together. It looks like I'm going to need some marker cleaning before the retreat. So maybe we'll make a marker cleaning maintenance video coming up soon. Okay, so this is the second blue color. And what we're going to do is we're just going to extend out from where we put the original. And then we're going to leave a small space in the center on those front ones to put in the lightest color. So for this one, I'm just going to touch along the bottom. Some of them I might end up coloring the whole thing, but it's okay. It's just paper. I'm trying to just touch a little bit. And then these, I'll just touch the inside. So right now it looks very, very blue. Very much like a a very bright blue, but I chose to pull in a BG-13 to bring in a, a blue-green color so it'll brighten up this. So I'm just going to do in a circular motion right over top of these little circles to blend that out, to brighten that up. And I am going to go over the ones that I colored in already because it may blend out and lighten it just a little bit. So there we go, we got a much, much brighter blue going on here. And then down here on these, I'm just going to use the tip of the marker and I'm just going to pounce over the circles like two or three times to get some of that really bright color in there. Instead of trying to actually color like this, I'm just going to pounce on top of it because they're very small little dots. But I want them to stand out, see, like they just did. In the vid in that camera, it doesn't look really, really blue, but look, see, it is really blue in there. And then we have to do these little things down here, which will make us a little bit of blue and purple on the tail as well. And then we're going to do this eye. Now, I'm just going to finish filling in this eye because we put that that darker color around the outside. So now we have a really bright blue eye. See how fast this cat colors up? I'm going to use my, this is what I needed my multi-liner for. I'm going to use the point three, and I'm just going to put a little dot in the eye. That was over a little bit further than I really wanted it to be, so maybe I'm going to make it a little bit bigger. My aim was off a little on that. But it's okay because we're going to, we'll come in with the white and uh, brighten that up a little bit. So if you wanted, if you wanted these um, lines to be really dark, you could go over them again with the multi-liner like this. Almost making it look like this guy has some eyeliner on or it'll really deepen those colors. But you don't have to. You can, but you don't have to. So let me show you what it looks like. See, it just deepens up those, those colors for us. And then if you want to, you can either use a very light gray to move the color around, or you can use a white gel pen if you want to put any um, like accent colors on it. So we might put a little bit of this white gel pen like, like right here. And I'm just barely touching, so it's very, very light. A little bit right here, since we'll see this part right here. Get us a little bit in there. And then I might put just a tad up here. One a little on his eye, but not real dark, so I'm going to touch it with my finger afterwards and kind of lighten it up a little bit. So he has some highlight in there. You can white and smudge after it dries and lighten up that white so it's not so um, 
Hi, Cheryl. That's okay. Yeah, I decided, well, you know, it's my regular night, so we colored this cat, put a little bit of white on him. I almost think it would look really neat. Let's just play around. If we mess it up, it's just paper. We can do another one. He needs a little dot in his eye. Let's put a little bit on these little stones right here and see what it looks like. I mean, who knows? I had no idea. If it look okay or not, but sometimes we just wing it and hope it works out. And it's a little hard for you guys to see it, but it's just got a little bit of weight in there. Eh, it's alright. It's not my favorite, but, you know, he's still cute. I'd still use him. He's super duper cute. The white looks really bright on the camera, but when you look at him in real life, it doesn't look real white on there. Hi, Nadine. But I like him. And if you wanted to, you could always use a gold pen. Like, this is my gold gel pen that comes with the Pear Blossom Press. When you buy the Pear Blossom Press white gel pen, you can get it white, gold, and silver all together. So if you really wanted this to stand out a little more, you could use this gold pen and just go into the little areas in there with the gold to make it really shine. See how much that shined it up? So I'm just showing you a few options, different things that you could do if you wanted when you were coloring it. See how much that really makes it stand out? And then we, in order to make a match, we could just put a little over top of these as well. Just to kind of keep that all consistent. See? That really makes it stand out. You could even do like the little circle with the gold or whatever you wanted. I'm not going to actually do that because I don't really want the that part gold. But you could if you wanted to. Anyway, it's super cute. And this, that gold gel pen really made that pop out of there. That's super pretty. So... Let's do this one. This one's pretty fun too. I say we stick with the same colors. Only most of the time when people color this, they usually color the outside black and then the inside a different color. Jamie did hers in gold when she colored these. She did gold, blue, and red. Hi Harlan. But I'm going to do them just a little bit different tonight. I don't want black to be the outline of it. I want it to be more colorful. So I'm going to do the outline in the blue colors that we used on here. So the blue and purple is more of what I'm going to use on here and then accent with black and gold. So let's start with, let's decide. Okay, so... I'm going to actually write it down just so I don't forget because I'll get to coloring and I'll do the wrong thing. So outside, I want to be the blue, the um, large inside, it's going to be purple, and I may have to add a few more colors. Oh, thanks. Jamie and I have the same color nails right now, but I'm probably going to get mine done again before I leave. Um, I'm going to do the... I'm going to do the scarab in my gold, and maybe just with my gold gel pen. And then I'm going to do the these things if I with the black. So now I can remember what I said. <laughs> Thank you. Okay, so here we go. I'm going to start with the inside blue piece first. It's the largest part. 
So I'm going to start with that first. So we're going to turn this little onk upside down. And I'm going to start coloring from, from the bottom up. And then I'm going to do here, down just a little bit. I'm not going to go all the way across. I'm just going to do a little bit. We'll come in with the other color here in a minute and get more of it in there. Down here at the bottom, I want to put just a little bit of this color in there. And then, since this is the top, I'm not going to do that part, but I am going to do the top of this right here. My hand kind of shook when I did that one, but that's all okay. So I'm going to just start it off like this with this top area. Now we may have to add a couple more colors just because um, I only have three colors chosen. But if you guys want, we can try and run with just the three colors because sometimes people don't have enough markers for a five color combo. So we may just try to stick with this three colors. And then if I just can't stand it, I'll switch it up. <laughs> If I just can't take it, I'll switch it up. But for right now, I think we're going to stick with these three colors. Yeah, I already know what color I want to do my nails when I go in. If I end up with time, I just don't know if I'm going to have time to go. The nail place. I got a really cool cup I'm drinking out of tonight. Can't tip it too much, but it says, warning, the girls are drinking again. But I'm only drinking soda. I'm just going to do the corners down here, and then I'm going to do the bottom of this one. Same thing up here, just the corners. And then down here, I'm going to do the corners and all the way across the bottom. And same thing with this one right here. I'm going to do the top corner and this corner and then along the bottom like that. So that, that gets our darkest color in there. Our next color is going to be the B16. And we're going to just flip it upside down again. And we're going to start extending out from where we put the last color. Now remember, if we're going to stick to three colors, we're going to need quite a bit of this one in there. And since I decided to stick with three later rather than earlier, I'm not sure how well that's going to go, but we'll see. If we have to add more, we can add more. I mean of the same colors. We can extend out and go back to the darkest shade if necessary. Or we can tip to tip. I want to bring it up all the way up on both sides. It's the same place. So kind of like that. And then we're going to start coming down from this side. Since this is our middle color and it's going to be the one we use the most because it's like the true color of the onk. I'm going to do it a lot with this color, leaving just shadows and highlights going forward. So just coloring in a little bit more of it so I can have a smaller area for the last color. You should be home in two weeks. You should be, you'll probably be getting home when we're, when we're in uh, Ontario, California. Okay, so that was pretty simple. These actually color up a little bit faster than they look like they do. Look at that. It's so pretty. 
I love it. So I'm going up from the bottom and down from the top. I'm sort of going in both directions tonight. If you need to turn the paper, do so when you're coloring yours. Don't be shy. I just don't want to make you dizzy, and since I'm feeling pretty comfortable coloring in both directions tonight, I'm not always, but tonight I am, so we're just going to do both directions. Okay, now we have one more section, and then we'll go on to our last blue color. You know, if you guys ever have any questions or anything about why we're doing something or why we're coloring it a certain way or anything like that, feel free to chime in. That's what we're here for, to help you. The next one is BG13. Hi, Linda. So I have a little bit of something to tell you guys, my friends. I'll be live tonight and tomorrow night. But Thursday night, I'm going to be going out with my hubby. So I won't be live on Thursday, but Jamie said she'll do a live for me instead. I don't know what time she'll do it, but she'll definitely post and let you know. It looks like I need a color in between these two colors to get this to really shine. So we're going to do a little bit of tip to tip here in a minute to blend these colors a little better. So those who are not familiar with the tip to tip blending, I'm about to show you how we're going to do that. So. I got that color in there, but you can tell that around these edges, it just is not blending as well as I wanted it to. It is a pretty blue. I do love this. Um, I'm going to take this marker right here, which is the B16, and I'm going to use the BG13. And don't ever take from here, because this is icky gooey jellied. It's bad for your nib and can clog your nib. Go straight onto the, the brush of the nib. Then when you blend these two, you have both colors on there. And it gives you a shade darker than the one that you're using. So you definitely want to use the previous color and the current color together. And you can do this with any of the colors. You can tip the tip on any shades that you want. So we're just going to keep doing this, and as the color wears off the marker, then I'm just going to blend out. And look at how much smoother that's starting to get. It looks a little bit smoother over here on this side, and it's a little bit smoother on this side now. So we have it a little uneven. See how it's darker on this side and not on this side? So I'm just going to pick up the B16 and I'm going to go back in with the B16 here. Now anytime the color is already dried, it's going to make it a shade darker. So we have to go over the whole thing in order to fix that. Then I'm going to blend out from here. Probably would be better if I was blending with 15 instead of 13. So we may switch up. So I'll show you the difference between 15 and 13. So let me wipe off, once you finish doing your tip to tip, you wanna wipe off the marker so you can get back to the true color of this marker before you close the tip. If I took BG15 instead of BG13, this is 15, this is 13, they're really, really close. See how close they are? But there's just slightly more of the blue than the green in the BG15 than the BG13. And I think that's why my blend is not going as smoothly as I would like. So we're going to jump from 13 to 15 and see if that helps us out with the rest of the images. 
It does not hurt your markers at all to do the tip to tip, so don't worry about that. But let's see how BG15 performs with our BG16. I'm gonna start blending this out and see how it goes. Let's see if 15 is a little easier blending than 13. I think it is. It blends better. I think it's a better blender, but I think it's also still washing out some of that um, BG16. So I'm going to go back in. This might be a back and forth if you're just using three markers to really get the color that you want. But I don't mind doing that. It just kind of shows how you can just use three color blends to get something really beautiful. So there we go. That worked out really good. Okay, so we're gonna stick with the BG15. But I think some of this uh, washing out is happening because the color is already dried because I've been sitting here talking to you guys. And I allowed for the rest of the blue to dry up before I started mixing. So I've decided to put the first coat on and then go back with the second coat afterwards. So instead of continuing to blend with the same color, I'm giving it a second or two to move around before I come in with the second one and look at how much more smooth that worked. So watch when I do that again. So last time I just kept going over it, going over it, going over it, and then I had to go back in with the BG16 and darken it up. When I did this one, I just kind of laid the color in there. I knew it wasn't blended well, but I laid the color in there, gave it a chance to move around, moved on to this one. And then go back and hit this one one more time. And it blended it out nicely. So that's a helpful tip as well. Remember, if you allow the ink to dry some and you go in with the second layer, it darkens the color. So you just have to know how it behaves. You just, I think I just cut out for a split second, but I'm back. I think you just have to wait and let it dry for a little bit in between to get that really good smooth blend. So sometimes it's trial and error. You just need to wait. We'll just wait a second, then we'll go back in and give it a chance to blend itself out. Well, that's letting the markers work for you and not you working for the markers. It's beautiful. I love it. I love how it came out. So it was helpful to jump to BG15 instead of 13 and it blended out nicely. I really like it. I hope you guys like it too. Okay, I wanna do my little scarab in all gold, but I think I'm gonna use the gel pen. So I have to wait until I color everything else and do it last. I want it to really stand out and we know that this stood out so much better once I used the pen, so I want that little scarab to stand out a lot so I'm gonna use the pen but I'm gonna wait until I finish because it's not good to go over the pen with your Copics so do the pen last like I would never go back over any of this white gel pen with the black okay so we decided purple for the rest of the um so the V09 is gonna be our first color I'm glad you guys like that blue I love those blues together I love them so much. So this is the V09, and I want my darkest area to be right in here, and then it'll start coming out from there in the dark, and then we'll start getting much, much lighter. So I'm gonna start in here, but I don't wanna do right around the scarab, because if I get all up in here, it's gonna be way too dark, like you're not even gonna be able to see. Um, the scarab shape or anything. So I'm just gonna go around him, leaving him a little bit on his own. And we'll come in with the lighter color for that one. Mm 
Yeah. That's why. I'm glad you were going to ask, though. Always ask. I try to tell you why, but sometimes I forget because, you know, we hang out all the time. So I'm kind of going a little bit around the scare. I want to put just a little bit in there because I don't want to leave a whole lot of white. But I don't want to get too close either. So now I want to go around these edges right here, these bottom edges. I'm not going to do the top. I'm just going to do the bottom. And then I'm going to do the bottom down here. That's just the way that I see it. You can color your onk however you see it. I'm gonna go up a little bit more on this top area, but I'm gonna do it on the outside, like that. There we go. Not gonna put any on the top right now. Don't really want to. Although we could do right up against this top, but we'd have to make a very fine line. Which is probably what I would do if I was coloring by myself. <laughs> it's a lot. It's, it's a little challenging to get a line that thin. So if you don't feel comfortable with that, don't do that. You'll be just fine without it. D17 is next. And I'm just going to start extending out from there, from where we put the last color. This one is much lighter, and I don't want to put the lightest color inside, so I am going to go ahead and start blending out all around the scarab, making sure I don't color his wings or anything like that, just around his body. I will probably, I don't want to do a whole lot of blending there because I don't want the color to go into the scarab. I will blend again with the next marker so I can get that other color in there. But I won't be doing a lot of blending. So this one is the second color in the combo. So it's the one that you put, you use more than any other because it's my true color. Got a little thick handed there at the top, but again, it's okay because we'll blend out with the other color. There we go, starting to come together. We're going to blend out from this one and out from this one. I'm going up a little bit here. I do want to come around the outside of this. There we go. The last color will be the last one. Hi, Cindy. So we're just giving this some style. The next color is really going to make this this whole thing pop and it's the reason I chose that one that color I'm gonna go down from the top and up from the bottom and then I'm gonna do a fine line around the outside of it again this is your it's your design it's your I left you when I drew it I left you a lot of ways to elaborate your own style on it so you can do it however you want this is how I would color it so B15 is next it's the last one in the three color combo so we're going to go over this area right here where we colored the last color just because I want to really put that bright purple in there as well because when I get up here you're gonna really see it see how much brighter that purple is gonna bring all of that to life it also moves the ink a little bit so you can really get a good blend with a good highlight 
good spot right there, which I don't like. You see that spot right there? I missed it with the V17, so I'm going to go back. V17 and blend that out. And then back with 15. This is 15. And I'm just blending all the way around. Trying to keep a little bit of highlight going on. A little bit of back and forth there to give us a really smooth color. Now remember these little things, we're going to color them black. They're going to be that dark gray. So if I accidentally go into them, it's not going to matter because we're going to use gray anyway. And it's darker than this purple, so it'll cover it up. So I'm not really worried about it too much. There we go. This is really pretty in this blue and purple, and it's going to go really good with this cat. I see us doing a project with both pieces on the same card. I think it'll be gorgeous. I am going to touch down here even though it's all colored in just because again I just want to get that very light purple color in there. Okay. I'm going to have you guys wait until um, the end to see the gold on the scarab because I think that it's going to be pretty awesome. So I'm going to cut these black markers down to three. So we're going to do C10, 8, and 6 so we can stick with our three color combo. This one is C10. This is the darkest one. So this is the one where we want to put any of the shadow areas. Notice how I'm not doing every single every single triangle area. I'm just doing the whole thing as though it's one. It makes life easier. Could I do each individual one? Yes, but do I want to? No. Too much trouble. This one, I want that to be really dark in the corners. Same on this one. They're very small areas, so it's not really going to matter too, too much. We just need to get some dark in there so it looks like a shadow. I'm going to do the same thing on this one. Once we bring in those lighter colors, you'll still be able to see the lines in between, which is important to us. C8 is going to be next. And for this one, it's the true color. So I'm going to extend out from where I put the last one. It's still a very dark color, so I'm going to put a little, I'm going to touch each one of those lines in between just to give a little bit of shadow in there. So just touching each one of those lines and changing them from the Memento ink to this ink so that they, they stay beautiful. In between, each one you only got to barely touch it because it's a really small area. Same thing on this side. In between each one, stay consistent, make them all the same. Same thing with this one. You don't have to touch every one, just as long as you're giving it that effect. If you touch too much, like I did on that one, it's no big deal, no one will notice it, I promise. So don't stress when you're coloring it too much because no one's gonna notice that. Everybody makes mistakes. They're just 
an opportunity for a new look. C6. That's our last one in the color combo, so I'm just going to start blending these out. So I just want to mix those colors together. If it's too dark, we can always go back in and I'll show you how to do that with a lighter color. Look, I did that side lighter. You could also just touch it in between each one like this instead of doing a blend and that will keep it lighter. So that's another option you can do. So there's different ways of doing it. Now, we both know I got a little bit too dark on that one little square right there. The way I would fix that is I would use the colorless blender and I would just touch it just a little bit and it's going to lighten that up. If it doesn't lighten it enough, touch it again. And that's going to lighten it up enough that it doesn't really matter that you missed it. Now here's where the wow factor is with this pen, which I'm super excited about. So I'm going to do the little wings. And then I'm going to do this. You have to be careful because it will co cover up the black. So we, I just want to put the, this gold pen in the white areas. Look at how that makes that little bug stand out. It's like, wow. Isn't that cool? I think I'm going to try to do add just a little bit down here below like there's a second wing. Because there is a second wing, but I think it... It stamped out pretty dark, but look at that. Isn't that gorgeous? This pen is amazing. Hi, Deanna. So I really, really like how that came out. What do you guys think? Do you like that? Look at how beautiful that is. I'm going to zoom out just a little bit so you can see them both at the same time. These are the two that we colored tonight. Aren't they gorgeous? They're super gorgeous. Somebody want to tell me what time it is? Is it early enough that we should try one more or are we done? You like it? And look how quick those were. I don't think that really took us all that long to color. We, I, I want to see that cat in purple too. Are you still here, Joy? Are you gonna color the cat in purple and post it for us, or should we, should we venture out? So this is two of the stamps of this set. This one and this one. Okay, so it's ten forty-five here. So it's a little early, but. And this one we colored the other night, so I'll show you what that looks like. We colored that before I went to the expo. And it came out like this. So that was this scarab. We kind of used the same, some of the same colors, except we used some really vibrant purples. But we had the same golds. So now we've colored all three of these. So we could do um, tomorrow. Let's do let's do this girl, or we could do the mummy, or we could do the we could do any one of these. What do you guys want to do? You tell me what you want to do tomorrow night. Which one do you want to color tomorrow night, or do you want to see the scarab again? Look at how gorgeous that is. They all came out great, and they're super easy to color. So we can definitely. You can definitely color these. You guys like? I like. But I don't think we've colored any of these. So if you guys want, we can color these. I think Jamie did the other one in the release. So all of them? Okay. The mummy? You want to see the mummy color? I've colored the mummy several times. I love coloring the mummy. I would show you the other mummy that I colored, but I can't because... I used something from the next release with it, and so I can't show it to you. But um, 
Yeah, we can do the mummy. We can do the, we can do two of them tomorrow. So we we'll do two of them tomorrow, and then when I get back next week, we'll do the rest. You're almost done. Well, I think I'm almost done too. So I'll do the mummy and one other one. I'll let you guys think about it, and tomorrow you can tell me which one you want to do. But we'll color all of them. Eventually, you know I like to color the whole release. So there you go. <laughs> and then we'll make cards out of these. I, I promise I won't leave them sitting there. You know I always make cards out of them so you guys can see how we used them once we colored them. So we have these two. We'll hold on to them. We already made a project out of that one. So we'll hold these two. We'll make projects out of them. And we'll color these. Sound good? Thumbs up? Sound good? I know I've got to work tomorrow, so we... So I gotta get up in the morning. <laughs> so who wants to know what I've been working on? Guess what I've been working on? Okay, I'm gonna zoom out so you guys can see all my mess on my desk. I'll post this to Facebook, but let me show you what I've been working on. So um, the my I called my dentist to pay for my bill from the last time I went. So they sent me a bill. And when I paid the bill, she said, oh, it's your dentist's birthday, 70th birthday's coming up. And we're doing a big thing, and we thought maybe you could make a card. And um, not they're asking a lot of the patients, anybody who wants to write a note or make a card or do whatever can do whatever they want. So I said, um, what if I made a scrapbook? And they were like, seriously? And I was like, yeah, I'll just make a scrapbook. So in the past two days, this is what I've made. So this is page one. So he'll be able, this tells, tells him where to put the photos from their get together that they're doing for him. And then in here, the, these are the pockets where all the cards go that all the patients are giving them. So pockets on all of them. And then when you open this up, he loves um, musicals and plays and stuff. So I did a layout in the musical kind of theme for him. More pictures. Then these are pockets, but they stand up. They're kind of thick. See how I can fit my finger in there? So this one is kind of a thick pocket to hold more cards. It says, thank you for making us smile. More cards in this side. And then... These are for photos again. Look at these little, oh my gosh, these little teeth I found online. I just printed them out and stuck them in here. They're so cute. And then you can put photos on there. And this one says cards go in this side and cards go in this side. This says 100% best dentist. <laughs> and then this one says memories and this one. so every other one is a place for car for pictures and then the opposite one's a place for all the cards from all the people who are donating cards and notes and this one because you know he's a dude and he likes cars and stuff and so I added old cars to this one time flies when you're having fun and then you switch it over and this pocket I made clear so you could see and if anybody made any like really cool cards or notes that you wanted to see and then this one has cards, and it says, Happy Teeth, <laughs> because he's a dentist. And then these ones are birthday pages, since it is his birthday. So it says, Surprise. Um, so all these things, I just found them online. And then this one, oh, wait, hold up. There we go. And then this one is pockets as well. So here's pockets here. This one's for notes and cards. And this one's for cards. And it says, thanks, you are the best. So this is what I've been working on diligently. So I can get it all ready to give to him. It's going to be have 15 pages. So 15 pages front and back is like 30 pages for the scrapbooks. And I think it'll be pretty awesome. I have a just a plain black book to put them in but I'm super excited about it because I mean I've been with this dentist for like 23 years or something so it's the least I could do is a little a little something I'm excited to show them although he won't get it till December but I'm excited to show the lady 
uh, Susan at the front desk who I know really well. I'm excited to show her. I think he'll love it too. He's very much, he loves photography and that's why, and he loves plays and stuff. That's why I use the cameras and all that, you know. So like I know him because I've been going there for so long. But um, anyway, that's what I'm working on. I have five more pages to go and then it'll be done. And I'm hopefully going to have that done tomorrow. And then I'll work on Sweet Keepers for the next expo. And I'm working on the retreat. So, woohoo! And Christina, I need to get with you to look at dates. So, yay! So, I hope you guys enjoyed that. I hope you love that stamp set and, and the other stamp sets we have. Remember that um, we have an expo next week as well, next weekend. Not this weekend, but next weekend. So the lives will be in and out, but we'll let you know. Um, and then in December and January and February, they should be very consistent. So we will be able to color lots and lots of things. And thank you so much for joining me tonight. Oh, I'm glad you like it. I'm glad you like it. I had to share because, you know, we just don't get to share that much. But um, anyway, love you guys. Thanks so much for joining me tonight. I will do my best to post this up on YouTube if, the, if, if Facebook will let me. And I'll see you guys tomorrow night, same time, 930 Central Time. Bye.